Kelly. It's great. On today's show, Matt Farah checks out the 2012 LA Auto Show. Ooh. Matt Myra checks out George Takei, and Eric Andre is here to learn us about his adult swim show. Yeah. So much going on. Today. It's hard to say Matt Farah, Matt Myra. Uh, it's you so what I'm difficult. Saying? Matt Farah, Matt Myra. So yeah. hard. It's nice to have you back. It's so nice to be back and have you back. Well, thank you. Uh, but yesterday was the first time I've ever done the show without you. I know. Oh. It's weird. It I'm glad weird. you got to host with Sarah, but uh, I fun. couldn't be here. So I know. I know you couldn't. I'm sorry. You missed. <laughs> uh, you missed. Sarah got scared at something. For what? <laughs> we did Spider Busey. Do you remember Spider Busey? I remember yeah. Spider Busey. Spider Busey. <laughs> Spider Busey was kind of silly, uh -huh. and she, we all got very scared. But then uh -huh. later, Sarah was shooting something, mm -hmm. and the producers started to mess with Spider Busey, and she actually got really <laughs> scared. Check out what happened after the show. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. <Ready. coughs> oh my God! It scared the <laughs> 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 Than scary. I mean, Sarah, well, you, you, there you are. What what scared you so much about that? I, did, I just I I thought it was a real spider out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> They're messing with me. Oh, are you, Candace? Are exciting. you not afraid of spiders now? Or no, what? I'm not. Well, not very afraid of spiders okay. anymore. We had spiders on the show. There was a yeah. tarantula. <laughs> I touched it. I touched the fangs. What? I know. I you never in my a, life. You touched a tarantula's fangs. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. I know, but I did it, and so. I'm not as scared of spiders as I used to be. I think spiders are totally scary, and I. <laughs> We got Can you it. Come down more? Oh. We'll just leave this right here. <laughs> Never trust a woman. <laughs> <laughs> you just scared the crap out of yeah, me. That's funny. Good job. Uh, well, well, should we do what we're supposed to do? Or I do think we, we should. Okay. I think we should run down the top things on the web. We're going around the net. <laughs> <laughs> Cats can squeeze into anything. Anything. Hey, mm. cut that. What? No, 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 cut that. Hey, 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 cut they actually call that game clawing for pussy. <laughs> really? Is, is that what that's called? Which is also what I called my spring break. Oh, uh, I worked at a cat shelter. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. Are nice. you? Are you? Do you like the claw machines? Or? I love the claw machine. I have my whole life. I have been so good at that. Every time I put in a quarter, almost I win. You win at the claw machines. Oh, I've, yeah. I've never. Oh, is there always. a is there a strategy? Because yes. I've never wanted one of yes. those ever. Really, never. I'm not good at that okay. at that game. The key is to not go for what you want, but what oh. you can get. Go go go, go for, for what you can get. Also, good relationship advice. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Don't go for what you want, Michael. Go for what you can get. Go for what you can <laughs> capture for a dollar. <laughs> Uh, this next clip shows a typical day hanging out by the pool, and then across the pool, and then into the hospital. You know, the same thing happened to Jesus the first time he tried that. <laughs> You know what's disgusting? You know how much pee is in that pool? That's disgusting for that guy. So? What's wrong with pee in the pool? You're not... That's gross to pee into a pool. Don't tell me that... I pee in the pool? We've already been over this. It's not gross. Thank you. Thank you. Because was... you are admitting that you do it. And all these guys that are ooing, ooh, gross, you all pee in the pool. Come on. We have had this conversation no. before. Don't... Everybody pees in the pool. I think it's disgusting. The second you get in the pool, you have to pee. I... 
At least I do. <laughs> I, I never pee in the pool, but My... once a year I'll take a crap in a pool. <laughs> No. no, no, I don't poop in the pool. Different. No, it's different. crap is different than pee. <laughs> it's much different. Uh, the Hobbit is already screening for critics, and nobody is more excited to see little people running around stabbing stuff than these guys. Yeah, love it. You shall not pass this song on to your friends. What? Despite all this video's visual stimulation, all it makes me do is realize how awful this song is. I what? can't no, take this song. This song is so good. I love this song. It always gets you in the mood to go out, and in this video, it's even better than the original. You like this song because it's a song about men spending money on women at the bar, and I don't like that because that's what I do. Okay, first and then off, it's just a song about shots, and I don't right. even like shots. You don't like shots? No, I hate shots. We have footage the last time I hosted this. <laughs> Shots. What did we take shots of? Uh, we can talk about that privately, but remember we had some car bombs? Remember I don't that? know what you're talking about. That's no. not a shot. That's a car bomb. It's different. It's different? That's just chugging. Uh, okay. That's chugging. Technicality? It's different. It's different. That's a shot. And secondly, thank you, I don't let guys buy me drinks if I don't know them. Whoa. I don't. I don't, because then you have to talk to them, right. and then you have to act like you're interested in them, and most of the time you're not. And right. I don't want to lead somebody on, and if they buy me a drink, I'm not just going to walk away and be a... You, you feel like there is a bit of a social contract if someone buys you a drink. Oh, yeah. yeah. I well, mean, I know a lot of girls who will take the drink, they'll talk to a guy until he buys them a drink, yeah. and then they'll take the drink and walk away. Well, and we, that, you can't do that. We, that is wrong. What do we, you can't do that. What do we call those women? Bitches. <laughs> yes, bitches. We do call those girls bitches. Okay, well, note to self. Don't buy Candace any more shots oh. or drinks. Oh. Well, not you. Well, me, I can dance? Yeah. Okay, fine. It's fine. Play <laughs> Adios, ATN. Okay, now, still ahead, we'll tell you how porn stars are healthier than you think unless they're undead. Oh. Oh. Stick around. We'll be right back. Oh. Attack of the show is coming to an end, and we need your help. Do you have a favorite AOTS blooper, comedy bit, or segment that you want to see one last time before we pull the plug? Well, now is your chance to speak up. Send us an email with your name and tell us what you want to see in the final episode of Attack of the Show. Email us at mayorofg4 at g4tv.com. Now, here's some very important stuff for you to put in your brain. Guys, I know that when you watch porn, you think about the tragic childhoods that led porn's leading ladies down the path to gangbangs. Yeah. Well, that's what I think about when I'm watching the porn, because I care about <laughs> porn stars as people. And I'm pretty sure that's an image that we've used in the past. <laughs> But the Journal of Sex Research, which is America's second most respected journal of sexy times, <laughs> preceded only by Hugh Hefner's secret diary, oh. be <laughs> believes that everything we know about porn stars is wrong. Oh. Oh. Specifically the part where they have sex on camera for money because they feel bad about themselves. Oh. Researchers interviewed 177 actresses of an erotic nature and discovered that they had higher self-esteem and more positive body image than an equivalent group of women who have never gone cash for nude. Oh. Cash for nude, it's, it's like cash for gold, but just much more depressing. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, they're still porn stars, which means they admitted to using more drugs and losing their virginity at an earlier age than the so-called normal ladies. Mm. But this does explain why the porn adaptations I've seen lately have all featured strong, positive female protagonists, <laughs> like the inspiring tale of Aaron Kokovich. <laughs> The thrilling, action-packed The Dunher Games. <laughs> and of course, everyone's favorite gritty biopic, The Iron Lady. Oh. Now, speaking of pornography, hide it. Because the infallible voice of God on Earth is on Twitter. Oh. Assuming, of course, you're Catholic. Oh. The Vatican City has announced that Pope Benedict XVI has joined the social networking site with the username Pontifex and has plans to release a mobile app, too. Oh, how exciting! 
<laughs> but if you're looking to flood your Twitter feed with fun Latin phrases about suffering from his holiness, you might want to hold off a bit. Benedict has over 400,000 followers, but has yet to make a single tweet. Oh. Vatican officials say the pontiff will make his first official tweet on December 12th, answering three to five questions about faith and belief with the hashtag AskPontifex. Oh. I'm guessing someone's going to be filtering those questions, though, so don't plan on finding out if he wears boxers or briefs or where they're keeping all the proof that Mary Magdalene was Jesus' wife or, you know, anything about those pedo priests. Oh. I think this is great, though. I love it when powerful religious figures make themselves accessible on social media. It's a way of bringing theology to the masses and reviving Stone Age ideas for the 21st century. The Dalai Lama has been tweeting inspirational thoughts since 2010. And if you're ever in the mood for tweets about sacrificing infants in a fiery pit, might I suggest following the Twitter account of the ancient Phoenician god Moloch. Oh. If you're, if you're not into his doctrine, he's also got great Instagram photos of slow cooker recipes. <laughs> and only a few of those have babies in them. Look, we can all agree that almost everything associated with The Walking Dead is actually pretty enjoyable. From the comic, to the TV show, to the t-shirts, to the haunted house, zombie runs, zombie balance bands. Wait, really? What? That's kind of a stretch. <laughs> and even the show's inexplicable zombie car, all are good. Except for one very misguided promotional item that set the web on fire with zombie-like rage recently. Seems a South African advertising firm made a sexy zombie bikini calendar to promote the show. But due to a tiny budget and clear lack of any common sense, the photographer chose not to use any actual zombie makeup on the models and instead just painted a bunch of bruises on them, which led to what io9.com referred to as a calendar of sultry ladies in bikinis who look like they've been badly beaten. <laughs> Check it out. Here's Miss Blowvember. She had a rough month. <laughs> That's right, it's sexy battered women calendar, which is totally what you want to promote a show that features fan favorites Michonne and Maggie getting the crap kicked out of them by the governor for a whole season. The best part is how bored these ladies look. It's like they're in a plane crash and then decided to put on a bikini and go sunbathing, which actually, now that I think about it, is kind of the plot of Lost. Yeah. Still ahead, I'm going to put my earpiece in. <laughs> Matt Myra beams around George to Okay, stick around. This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by Honda Power Sports. For great deals on gifts that go, it's go time at your Honda dealer. My next guest is an OG member of the Starship Enterprise and was mistakenly told by his agent that being promoted to captain meant tons more money. <laughs> Set your phasers to fun and please welcome the great George Takei. Yeah! Now, George, uh, as a child, I was a huge fan of the original series of Star Trek. As right? a child. As a child. Ended, oh, no, no, no. Childhood. It has continued, <laughs> but my childhood has not. And now, here's the deal. Uh, I always thought it was Takai, and then one day I heard you uh, correctly pronounce it to William Shatner as in toupee. That's right. Takei, everybody. Because Shatner wears a toupee, as we've all known. <laughs> now, now you're but, on... you know, I don't object to the uh, mispronunciation either. Oh, Takai. you don't? No, because... Uh, well, Takai is spelled T-A-K-A-I, right. and that translates into English as expensive. Oh. So if you want to call me that, well, listen, you're more my, than welcome. My last give name you is spelled M-I-R-A, but it's pronounced Myra, not Mira. Mm. So I, I've gotten over it. People pretty mispronounce it all well, the time when I'm over it. It's the Spanish we for We pronounce look. it M-I-N-D, um, M-I-N-D, mind. Well, okay, so you got it. Right. He, see, he knows English. Yeah. <laughs> well, you put a lot of Espanol también. Oh, boy. <laughs> I bet you know Japanese, too. Hi. Oh, we did it. He's trilingual, everybody. Now, you're on to promote. Uh, you're in the... You've, you've, you've jumped from the small and the large screen now into comic books. Right? Isn't that so wonderful? It's a fantastic... It's usually you've gone, you've gone the reverse way that people normally do it. Like, the oh, Avengers they start comics in comics, too. right? And then they end up on the big screen. But you're like, no, no, no. That's not good enough for me. <laughs> I'm George Takei. Now, you are appearing as yourself in Kevin Keller, which is the Archie Comics... Uh, sort of spin-off, right. which focuses on an openly gay character. 
So let me tell me a little bit about how this came about and like how how what is the process like for you? What do you have to do? Just say yes, that's what I look like. Good drawing. Well, you know, I never imagined myself being in a comic book. Right. I remember as a kid or a preteen uh, reading Archie sure. and uh, being, you know, fascinated by it because I wasn't in that community and right. I envied that, you know. And so I never imagined myself. But then they came to me yeah. and said, can they uh, have me as a guest on uh, Kevin Keller, yeah. the comic book? Uh, which is part of the uh, Archie uh, community. I was just flabbergasted and flattered by it. Oh, That's flabbergasted awesome. and, and flattered. flattered. <laughs> well, look yeah. at the cover of this thing. This is amazing. Have you seen the cover? That's beautiful. Isn't that great? Wow. And so I look great in it. And I, have more, <laughs> <laughs> I have more hair. Now, you've also uh, written a new book that's coming out. Yes, it's called Oh My. <laughs> This is fantastic. Now, tell us a little bit about what what, what do you go over in Well, oh first of all, the, the, you know, I never... Oh, my is a very commonly used phrase. Everybody uses sure, it. Sure. I've been using it all my, my head, life. In my head, it's you saying it yeah. every I, time I hear it. That's what it's become. <laughs> and there is a world-famed rascal named Howard Stern... Oh, who's, the great Howard Stern. Uh, uh, ...made it connected with me. Sure. Because, uh, you know, when I'm on his show... He does out, makes outrageous statements. Sure. You know, which the only way to respond to it is, oh my. <laughs> Plus, they have the sound drop, so Fred's always hitting that button and making it exactly. say, oh my, to anything. Well, I, there was an audio, audio uh, version of my autobiography that I recorded myself. Right. You know, I read the uh, book. And they take bits and pieces of uh, the words I utter and put, put them together. And they have me saying the most obscene <laughs> things, you know, about... Uh, uh, in my first uh, feature film, I played a character named Wang. <laughs> and they took that... I already love where this <laughs> goes. Where that's going. <laughs> and so, you know, it's been outrageous. And the only way... You know, I, I mean, I'm a good sport. Yeah. They play it for me, and I laugh at it, and I say, oh, my. You know? <laughs> so they have a lot of recordings of my oh, my's. So even when I'm not on the show, <laughs> whenever someone says something, uh, something outrageous or does something outrageous, Fred, <laughs> press the button, my voice, oh, my, comes on, you know. It's it is, and it is people have been different. hearing that and hearing that. And this was, uh, we were talking about my uh, autobiography, yeah, yeah. which came out in 94. I was doing a book tour. I feel like you omitted something in that biography. We'll yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm coming out with another one. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm doing the book tour. Yeah. And here are all these people lined up to get, get it autographed. And it's usually young men mm -hmm. in their late teens or... Uh, and into, into the 20s, they have the book, and they slip it in front of me and, and th with a smile, roguish smile. They say, sign it, oh, my. <laughs> thought, you know, why that? It's, I'm a Stern fan. There you go. And so I, I realize now it's become associated with me. It's become my signature. And so I thought, why not use that for my awe and amazement of what this thing called the internet can do. Yeah. Twitter, Facebook, you know, I'm a 75 year old man. I grew up listening to the uh, device called radio. I don't understand, what is that? Radio, <laughs> you glue your ear to it and you hear Cisco Kid or uh, the Green Hornet sure. or the Lone Ranger come, you're transported by it, you know. That was how I grew up. And the most amazing thing that followed that an incredible, sensational invention. There, there's a box that you put in your living room, I don't and follow. it's got a round screen, <laughs> and you see a black and white movie on it. What? You know, I grew up in that generation, and so this internet is really for me an yeah. oh my thing. <laughs> and then for it, uh, not today on Facebook, I have over three million friends. Can you imagine? I reach three million people. Uh, Facebook now, George, I don't want to break it to you. They aren't really your friends. Oh. Oh. They kidding. just like you. You don't. You guys can't talk about like stuff. I talk to them and they talk back. What? <laughs> and they laugh with me and they laugh back. I mean, I don't understand. Because oh, my mean? Facebook friends just say, "Hey, Tubby." Go, oh. <laughs> well, that's a, that's an expression of endearment. Oh, they great. love you. Thank every God, George. Inch of you, every no, just... ounce of you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, everybody. You heard it here first. Thanks to George Decay. <laughs> 
Archie Comics, Kevin Keller on sale tomorrow. Welcome to the 2012 Los Angeles Auto Show here at the LA Convention Center. Today, I'm going to take you through some of the newest, coolest concept cars here at the show. And I guarantee you this, every single one of them will be better than this. Concept cars and auto shows seem to go hand in hand. You see them everywhere you look around here. Some will make production, some won't, some are design studies. What you don't normally see are fully functional racing concept cars. And that's exactly what the Delta Wing is. The Delta Wing is a marvel of technology that couldn't be explained in an hour, much less in a minute. In racing, it's all about downforce. This car is two and a half feet wide up front and just under seven feet wide in the rear. Because the Delta Wing has most of its weight and makes most of its downforce in back, it can get away with the skinny front tires. Under the bonnet is a 1.6 liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine making 300 horsepower through a five-speed sequential transmission and a carbon clutch. It will hit 60 miles an hour in 3.3 seconds and an unbelievable top speed of 197 miles an hour. Racing car that looks like this does have its ups and downs. The downs being that it's actually quite difficult to see if you're another car on the track and it seems to get crashed into a lot. The ups are that it's very, very fast and finished fifth overall at the Petit Le Mans after starting all the way in the back at 44th. Whether or not you believe electric cars are actually our future, here in LA, alternative energy is extremely important. After all, most of the alternative energy cars sold in this country are sold in California. And behind me is the Honda EVster, their first attempt at a lightweight yet electric two-seat sports car. The EVster is a fully electric rear-wheel drive roadster with some of the most compact proportions we've seen on a road car. It's not designed with practicality in mind, just pure driving pleasure. Through the use of carbon materials, the EVster's weight is kept down, allowing the batteries to provide a 99-mile range under sporty driving conditions. Using software, the driver can change the dynamics of the car in real time, such as suspension adjustments, engine output levels, and regenerative braking. Perhaps the most unique feature of the EVster is the control interface, which features both standard pedals and joystick tillers surrounded by LCD screens. Now, while I'm not personally a huge fan of electric cars, what I do like about them is that they force manufacturers to save weight in other places to compensate for the batteries. In this case, that means full carbon fiber construction. And while I can't say that I hope electric cars take over the world, I do hope all Honda's cars are made out of carbon fiber in the not too distant future. The G-Wagon is perhaps the last uncompromised off-road ready vehicle on the planet, except for the Jeep Wrangler. And you have to wonder what will happen in the future when that body style finally becomes obsolete. Well, meet the Energy Force, a reimagination of the G-Wagon concept for the 21st century and beyond. This is what Mercedes engineers imagine police pursuit vehicles will look like in 15 years time from now. The Energy Force was designed as a police cruiser concept for the year 2025. It takes inspiration from the aging G-Wagon, but replaces slab-sided toughness with a more curvy appearance that to us looks more Nissan Xterra than Mercedes. The idea is that in the future, cars will be part of an autonomous grid, and the police will need vehicles like this in order to catch criminals who escape it. There's an electric drivetrain, the fenders are as wide as a 911 Turbo, there's a slick looking winch, lots of lights, a roof rack, and an integrated toolkit in the rear tailgate. There's even an homage to the current wagon with a G sculpted into the headlights. Because electric vehicles aren't exactly well suited to off-road use, we hope Mercedes figures out a way to charge this thing in the middle of the desert in the next 15 years. Now, since this is a total concept vehicle for a design challenge, not really ever destined for production, nothing in it really, well, works right now. But we do hope that they will reimagine the G-Wagon as something like this, but that we could all buy and enjoy on the street sometime in the future. But please put a gas engine in it. Well, there you have it, the three best concept cars of the 2012 Los Angeles Auto Show. And this, not a concept, real race car. I just wanted to touch it. Yeah.
I'm Sarah Underwood, and here are your top stories. This week, delegates from the United Nations are meeting in Dubai to discuss possible changes to the Internet. The delegates will discuss a wide range of topics, including global Internet censorship and even the possibility of an Internet tax. U.S. representatives are reportedly fighting most of the propositions, and it remains unclear how the group would enforce any new laws if they were to pass. But this still could have some very serious implications. We'll keep monitoring this story closely, and as soon as we know more information, we will keep you in the loop. And yesterday, NASA announced their earth-shattering discovery that the Curiosity rover had found organic compounds on Mars. Yeah! But, 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 but before you get too excited, know that the discovery doesn't necessarily mean we found life on another planet. Now, while there is no doubt that the rover found organic material, scientists still must prove that the findings are native to Martian soil. You see, there's a chance that the rover may have brought the compounds with it from Earth and accidentally contaminated the test sample. Hopefully we'll know the origin soon. Fingers crossed it turns out to be Martian. Yeah. And now, some entertainment news. First up, get excited, people, because Bill Murray has signed on for Ghostbusters 3. It looks like Dr. Peter Venkman will return in the newest project. Apparently, Murray called his old co-star Harold Ramis, a.k.a. Egon, out of the blue at 3 in the morning to say, yeah, okay, I'm in. Yeah. That sounds like something Bill Murray would definitely do. Shooting for Ghostbusters 3 is said to begin in fall of next year, and I cannot wait to see it. And The Hobbit comes out next weekend, but some who've already seen it are claiming that the 3D is making people sick. Ooh. A New Zealand newspaper reported that fans who saw an early screening of the movie had claims of dizziness, nausea, and headaches. In an interview earlier this year, Peter Jackson claimed that shooting in 48 frames per second would alleviate motion sickness that is associated with 3D screenings. It seems like that may not be the case. And finally, perhaps my favorite story of the day, um, the... Uh, sorry. And finally, I am very excited about it. I just messed up my reading. And finally, perhaps the best use of the White House, We the People website, there is now an official petition asking the U.S. to build a Death Star by 2016. Yes. Uh, the petitioners claim that this construction will encourage job creation, space exploration, and strengthen our national defense because, seriously, who's going to mess with us if we have a Death Star? So far petition only has about 1,000 signatures, so get out there, people, and make this happen. Yeah. Death Star 2016! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go! <laughs> I'm Sarah Underwood, and you've just been fed. Stay tuned. Eric Andre from The Eric Andre Show will be here live. I wonder how he got that job. <laughs> you suckers. What is it, Eric? And one. Someday I want the job that Eric Andre has to star in his own show. Eric Andre, everybody. Oh, Lord. Hide us, hide me, hide me, man! Hide me, man! Hide us, somebody hide us. Hide us, hide us, hide us, hide us. Don't forget them flames! That's me. What? Come on, come on. How do you, do, how, how should I describe your show to my friends? Because I go, watch my friend Eric Andre's show. It's like, I don't even know how to start it's describing. It's like poop and pee mixed together. Yes. Uh, it's like to catch a predator. I mean, how did you even, how, how does that happen? Adult Swim's just like, here's a bag of Domino's pizza coupons. Go make a go show. Go make a TV That's show. Right. That's got to be scary to do that. Uh, yeah, I was White racist terrified. people chase you. I was you're terrified. You're terrified. Yeah, I was terrified. You was act because you don't look scared when in the hidden camera stuff. Feel free to take your Reebok pumps off if you'd like. <laughs> I, was, I was terrified. I was terrified. Eric, you're the, 
You've had so many different pairs of pumps for as long as I've known you. Yeah, that's the one thing me and you have always had in common. <laughs> Re Let's do the rest of the thing holding hands. And look at his, uh, look at the ring. Can we get a close up on his ring right here? Who, it's a, it's a... Hello, spending that adult swim channel. I make 400 bucks a week, America. Which camera's mine? 400 a week, America. <laughs> You the fireplace, you have that? Adults got the, the fireplace? Fire fireplace? Hell no, we don't got that. We can't afford that, come on. Have you been arrested doing... Yes, some your... I have. Because <laughs> yes. the metal detector one that's available on your website, that, that you're going to, you have a metal detector in a jewelry store, you break something. Yeah. And then a security guard tackles you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you I didn't steal get arrested. jewelry. I didn't, from get arrested a jewelry I didn't get arrested that time. Why I not? got arrested. Well, we had permission from the owner of the uh, spoiler alert from the oh. from the jewelry uh, store. I know. Okay. I know. I know. Oh. Good night. Bye, Good night, America. <laughs> um, I mean, I so would have committed suicide on TV. That is my dream, but you can only do it once. So. You know that this show is actually canceled. So no. I, yeah. So I think the very last show is everyone is going to commit suicide. All right. <laughs> Is that very professional to constantly look at the monitor? Look at the monitor the as much as you want. Um, but I do need to talk to you about this because on your set, you break it all the time. You just break yeah. your set. Yes. We don't want you to break our set. <laughs> okay, I won't. But look, look at this. Now look at the monitor. Uh, How is, th I mean, you must injure yourself. <laughs> you I'm must injure yourself <laughs> doing that. I'm expressing myself. <laughs> I'm expressing myself. That's got to hurt. Thank, you have, you have some injuries or something. Yeah, I ripped my back in half. Oh, and no. I, uh, yeah, and I, uh, I'm a woman. I had my penis removed. Well, you but did. But that was for uh, cosmetic reasons. Instagram almost kicked you off when you actually showed a photograph of your I penis being did. removed. You know what? Yeah, I do a mangina, which is, yeah. There it is right there. You can't see. That looks worse. See, that's why censorship doesn't work. That looks worse. It <laughs> Because I, I'm tucking my genitals behind me. It looks I look like a nice lady. Some people right and, now who saw that, that photo are th saying to themselves, that A&T, that AT&T guy really <laughs> That guy. That guy. Who is that guy? I'm going to murder that guy. <laughs> there he is. That's not me. That is not me, I, I literally saw that it's guy. Not me. And I was about to tweet to you, you look like, and then I saw your Twitter bio that says, I am not that guy. Yeah. 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 Because every, every, everybody, mother flower out yeah, there yeah. says I look like that guy, and I think it's BS. I think it's horse pucky. What can you say on G4? There's no rules I here, I think right? you can say whatever you want. You can say whatever the we, heck you want. We had a guy. Hello, oh. Racy. We had a guy. Underwood. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, girl. Don't That's bring Blair me. Underwood. Her Blair style. Blair Underwood. <laughs> I love your HIV campaign. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's got the... La La Blair yes, Underwood, yes, man yes. up. Blair Underwood said, man up. She looks different in person. You woman. look different in person, that's all I'm saying. I'm a woman and I am white. You have us very mistaken. I do not see color, so I didn't even notice. Did a little say, more progressive than Blair Underwood. Did Candace as well? Candace that's Underwood. Okay. That's Candace Underwood. What up? Very proud parents. They're sisters. Really? And, uh, with benefits, hey. Yeah. Sisters with benefits. I want people to know that as co-host, co-guest host, I'm trying to lead an interview, but what the hell would you do with Eric Andre sitting next to you? You got the right one, baby. Aww. <laughs> um, you've also played the caveman, the Geico caveman. I did. I was a corporate whore for many yes, a year yes. before I got a job. And then what happened there because you... Sibilance, 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 sibilance. <laughs> Here's why Eric and I get along. Eric and I get along because we roomed together at the Aspen Comedy Festival we did. years ago. We did. I'm glad you that up, Bubby. And I think that we're opposite in many ways. No. <laughs> yes. No, 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 no. Do you guys know Mike Costa was the 248th, 48th best tennis player in the world? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a true statistic. That's, that's not a, a joke. No, you need to add 700 to that, and that's my actual ranking, but thank you very much for... 700, fantastic. Eric and I played tennis. Eric is a good tennis player. <laughs> Eric... Look at these new boxers I got. Look at these boxers. Eric... Look at these boxers.
Let's see if Look at this. Let's see if we can get it. Look at these boxers, man. One, two, three. Look in there. drops by the show live. Ben Matt Meyer rates Sony's new Google TV. Is it a five out of five? We'll have the answers on Gadgetron. And in indie games, we check out the crazy side-scroller Cini Mora and the latest DLC for Borderlands 2. It's Attack of the Show tomorrow at 7. got Chris Gore to spill the beans about what to buy, rent, and pass. <laughs> Welcome back, film expert, Chris Gore. Thank you. I always love a good Chris Gore chant. <laughs> awesome. What's up first? Well, it is the Dark Knight Rises! Batman fans around, what do you think of this one? Yeah, uh, first of all, you're right. Yes, I'm a huge Batman fan. Mm -hmm. The Dark Knight, uh, the original Dark Knight and Batman Begins, perfect films in my opinion. This film, while the action acting, uh, the spectacle of it is top notch, I had problems with the story. Okay. But because Batman is a character who was born from witnessing the murder of his parents right in front of him, but decides he's gonna take eight years off because of the murder of the girl that he loved, which I think, it just doesn't make sense. I can't see the character of Batman actually doing that. Okay. Um, in, having said that, that I have some problems with the story, it's so amazing, the spectacle in this thing. I mean, the film... So you let it slide. It was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was shot on film, finished on film. The Blu-ray looks absolutely crisp, beautiful, stunning. Okay. I mean, those action sequences hold up. I just wanted more Batman in the film. I feel like it yeah. suffered from that, you know? So problems with the story, problems with some of the Batman stuff, but still, the sequences that are there, are the, the, the Bane Batman fight in the middle of the movie is the, the best fight in the whole series, if you ask me. It's incredible. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Chris Nolan isn't known for putting too many special features on his movies. What do we get? Well, you get a lot of behind the scenes that, that you know, look at every aspect of the production, but one of the coolest is a 60-minute documentary about the Batmobile itself. Really? Um, that covers the design of every <laughs> single Batmobile from the beginning of the comics, uh, where he just rode a jalopy up to now, inc including, all of, like, them. all of them, including the movies, and in Batman Forever, they, uh, uh, Joel Schumacher had H.R. Giger, the guy who created Alien, design of Aliens, yeah, yeah. design one of the Batmobiles that looked like a bizarre insect from the top. And you get to see all these designs that were never used for Batmobiles. That's really cool. I it's love a, that. And they, they get every director. They get Adam West is in that documentary. Oh. It's just an incredible documentary about the Batmobile, being like Batman's steed. So it's a great special feature. Awesome. Okay, what's the bottom line? Well, I'm a completist, so in spite of the problems, it's a buy for me. Of course. It's a buy for me. Yay. All right. All right. What's our next DVD? It's Banana Mother... for this short film from Portugal in ATN, and it looked freaking crazy. How was the full-length thing? Well, the funny thing is, 
the full length thing is a short. I mean, it's like a 16, 17 minute short, and it's basically <laughs> about exactly what you see here. There's no story. There's just people being killed in bizarre ways with bananas, and that's it. Now, and are the bananas attacking, or are people attacking with the bananas? They're kind of attacking with the bananas, and they okay. find the bananas in odd places, uh, and people end up getting bloodied and bludgeoned, and it's, it's very just, realistic. Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, you think that this would be boring. <laughs> I watched this like six times, <laughs> thinking like, did I miss something? Then I watched the deleted scenes. There were actual oh deleted scenes gosh. from the short, and the and there's even an interview. There's interviews. <laughs> With, with, there's interviews with the banana so in, in nice. the film that, that are subtitled. So it's, oh, I love it. it. It makes no sense, but it's entertaining as hell, and it's called Banana Mother. What? You said it's 16 minutes? Yeah, about 16 minutes. I like that it's long. only 16 minutes, because you can tolerate 16 minutes of this. Like two hours of this? I don't know. I don't know. This I, is hysterical. I just played the 16 minutes over and over again, and it was still entertaining. <laughs> okay, so what's the bottom line? I'm like, uh, is buy it. Oh, I know it sounds buy weird. It. Because it's, right. it's one of those things you have on your shelf, and you go, hey, I got this thing you'll never believe exists. <laughs> Pop that in the DVD player. That's I have a whole true. shelf of those. Now we have a we need a palette cleanser right now. What else do you have to check out? We have My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Season 1. <laughs> did our plan to turn you into a brony by watching this succeed? I'm into a lot of weird stuff. I know you are. <laughs> we are all well aware. N not into being a brony. And the whole thing with this is like, I just didn't get it. It's one of those things where I didn't get it. But then yeah. a friend of mine gave me this cookie, and I ate this cookie, and then I watched, the, watched, uh, <laughs> watched it. And, I, and, then, special and cookie? then I got it. I a got special it. Cookie? I watched it again. Didn't get it. A friend of mine gave me another cookie. I really got it. OK. I still don't get bronies, though. What's but the I, bottom line? Bottom line is rent it, especially if you have some cookies. <laughs> OK. So, All right. right. Good, good advice. Good We've got time for a quick pick. OK. Eastbound and Down <laughs> is, uh, is one of my favorites. Uh, season three, it, it's amazing. Outtakes and deleted scenes and all that good stuff from this show. Love you, Spawn and Dad. Done. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Cool. Thank you. For more, go check out his Pod Crash podcast on iTunes. Yeah. All right. Wow. It is time for today's epic fail. I'm a big sports fan, which is how I know this isn't a regulation move. Everything seems a little small in comparison, doesn't it? After I can't believe he got naked. <laughs> he has the best picture. I have, I have an amazing photo, which uh, I've just sent to Candace, and I'll tweet. And it's uh, it's of Eric nicely, nicely tucked. And me like. And, and Candace is totally <laughs> freaking out. Eric's my friend. Uh, I knew it was going to be a weird interview, but that was totally fun, hilarious. Thank you, Eric Andre, George Takei, Matt Myra, Matt Farah, and Chris and, and Chris Gort. Good night. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Eric.